Hey guys, this is my 12th update of my 57 Deep Blue Professional Rimless Tank. Uh, it's been less than about a month from my last update. I also had a handful of people ask me about, you know, how to set up their tanks, um, you know, with the success I have, looking for pointers. And just uh, send me either a message or a comment, just let me know where you want me to focus on, on and I'll create a video and or just get back to you with any specific questions that way I can help you you know have a successful tank like I have and also want to give an update because I had a I would say a big direction change in my tank as I usually do I uh, in my last video I had the Christmas Rast, the trio of Bartlett Antheus and uh, Blue Jar Triggerfish the swimming room I wanted to create more, so I sold the trio and I also sold the Christmas rats only because my wife wanted some yellow in the tank and I replaced it, as you see in the background there, with the baby yellow chorus rats. I stood away from the rattler rats because they uh, were jumping out of the tank and that's the risk you're going to take with uh, regular fairy rats and uh, flasher rats. But the rats that sleep in the sand, their instinct is to go straight down. And that's why I take the risk because they are not much of a jumper, I would say. They're more safe, prone not to jump. Their instinct is to go hide in the sand. So that's why I go with this. And he's nice and yellow, very small juvenile, with three spots. And they uh, that's nice and colored to the tank. I also went in a direction more of a risk is the butterfly fish. Now the butterfly fish I have is from Australia. You rarely see it online. You rarely even see it in the marketplace in your local fish store. It's the marginalist butterfly fish. Now let me see if I can get him. He's going around. So far he's small. He looks like a copper band. Very similar. Just doesn't have that middle bar on him. And uh, they only are around the Australian waters from the north side. And they have the same beak. Uh, I see him pecking around the rocks. He seems to be leaving every coral alone. There's, there he is in the background there. See, he's looking around the rock. He leaves the coral alone, which he's just, that's what they do in their natural habitat is they go in the rock. That beak is there to get into like the little invertebrates and stuff like that. And you can see my assessor right there, but he can't. Maybe I get him later in the video, a better, better video of him, but you see him right there. And uh, there's my angel fish there. He uh, tries to pick on the angelfish a little bit. He tries to show his spikes on top, but nothing too crazy. You can see here there, they don't really bother each other. Just He tries to act tough because he maybe he's too small. But uh, he's a beautiful fish. Uh, he is, you know, like a copper band, so it's kind of almost reef safe, I would say. Uh, but, you know, I like taking a little risk and uh, taking a challenge and see if it works out. And if it doesn't, then, you know, I'll just get the fish out and put it in a better home. But if it works out, you know, something I can enjoy. The uh, trigger fish was doing good. Uh, left all the fish alone, but uh, he went after my conch a little bit. Maybe more of a curiosity bite, but, uh, you know, he, of course, the conch closed up, but I didn't want to take any more chances with uh, with that. He left the cleaner shrimp alone, so that was a good thing, especially when I had a cleaner shrimp that's definitely bite size. He definitely goes after ghost shrimp, so he knows the difference from a cleaner shrimp and a, uh, a regular ghost shrimp, which is a feeder shrimp. So, there's my conch right there. And this orange sponge here. It's a little dusty with all like some debris on it. But he also has this like purplish blue sponge going on it. Which is pretty cool. And uh, there's my conch. You see his eye right there. So, I go focus on it. It's it really hard to see. There's a little, little snout. That's what the, the trigger fish went after. And I don't want him to lose his mouth. So, uh, that's pretty cool. I always like the conch. So that was a change right there. I moved my uh, rainbow clove polyps right over here to replace because I did get an elegance coral. And I usually stay away from elegance corals because t they're not as hardy like they were 10 years ago. But um, the Australian ones are more hardy than the Indo. I stay away from Indo and I suggest a lot of people stay away from Indo because they'll just die. Uh, generally, they're a shallow water species uh, of coral, and they like high nutrient, high flow, muddy water. So, um, they that's the way they are in the habitat in the wild. 
Uh, so I put some medium flow here, and as you see, it's liking it. And um, you know, feed it daily to uh, make it uh, happy in this area, like my other coral. I moved my bleeding apple coral. I got a little sand on it. I was cleaning my tank this morning on the edges, and uh, he's doing good over there. Over here is my uh, my clam, doing very very well. It's hard to see with the blue and the lighting, but if I go on top, I don't know if you could get a good look on it, but it's like a tealish green. You really can't see it in this 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 uh, camera, but it's a pretty cool effect. I also went and uh, got a sun coral, black one. There's Bubba. Let me just focus on him. He's still doing good. He's just doing his like his beta thing and hanging out and. He's doing very healthy with my pipefish still alive. But the sun coral, it's slowly coming around. It's its taking some time to train it. But it uh, looks like he's going to break out sooner or later. So it's hard. Sorry about the focus here. But uh, it's a nice, it has a lot of polyps in here. And it kind of want to go a different direction than a normal sun coral. That's this bright yellow orange color. I'm on with the black. And I kind of like the little difference because you don't see too many black coral out there. So give that a shot. Over here, as you can see, my uh, Duncans are doing pretty good overall, but they compete for light, and I lose a couple of heads that are in the shade, unfortunately, but that's how it is with coral. I mean, they, that's the name of the game is to get light so they could uh, create food, and if they don't get it, they'll die off, along with water parameters. Uh, water parameters are very important. Blueberry is still, you know, nothing really I to say that it's still doing good and staying alive and had it for a longer time than... Uh, most reports I see there online. I mean, I mean uh, the average I hear is about six months, and I think I'm a little past that point now with this. And it looks like it's, um, yeah, it doesn't look like it's receding at all. So, having a good spot again. My recommendation is shade and lots of flow, and to have a lot of nutrients in the water. I do my fish chum with the rotifers, the cyclopes, the rod food, the um, Nutrima over. So all that little tiny um, food that gets floated around the whole tank when I feed my uh, tank with uh, other animals, it uh, it captures some of that and I think that's what's keeping it alive. And that's one thing why my tank is well and I would suggest people, you know, just throw my flakes or my shrimp, but I definitely do the fish chum and I think it does well because the coral gets it the fish gets it, it gives them a variety of diet. Just think, if you ate the same thing day in and day out, you're not going to like it as much. And variety always gives you better nutrition anyway. So that's why I, you know, I think it's a key to my success with my tanks is that with the fish chum that I do, I always vary the diet. And I always, you know, the fish will eat everything and then they'll have a mixed diet in their stomachs and they just grow healthy and stay well. I when I got the marginless butterfly, he actually was in the pet store for three months, and when I got in my tank, he had it right away. So he had it on him, but it guess what the change in tanks he got the it just came out, but it, it's been getting better, and my tank is very healthy where the fish will fight off any other floating ick. I also have a UV sterilizer to kill the floating ick won't get rid of the ick, but it helps get rid of the floating ick that's out there that wants attached to a host. And uh, he's been getting better every day, but the telltale sign that they'll fight it off is that they're swimming around, they're eating, and they're living a normal fish life. You can tell when a fish is not healthy is when it's hiding um, and, you know, pretty much not eating. And that's and they're breeding fast on the gills. That means the ick got attached to the gill plate and they're not going to survive because they're getting suffocated. Unfortunately, that's how it is with Ick, but he has uh, been good. I had him for about four or five days now, and uh, definitely a nice addition, nice rare addition to the tank. And talking about rare, it's, it's something, a fish that you will not see in my tank because he is in this rock here, and it's very hard to see, but you can look him up online. It's a red-banded, long fin basslet. Very small, about max size, about three inches. You just go look up a liveaquaria.com. Just type in red banded long fin basslet. It's a pretty cool looking basslet and very, very rare to see in the marketplace. 
And the reason why this one probably made it to the store is that he was probably in the rock when it was picked out by a diver, and he popped out. And that was just purely by accident. It's not like they were targeting at him, and there's a reason why he was able to get sold to somebody, because uh, that's how they all pop up sporadically in the marketplace. But sporadically is not even a word, rarely pop up. And, and I just got lucky that I saw him, knew how rare he was, and got a good deal thing, uh, because they had him in a tank with no rock, and he was sitting in the corner because he was not liking it. And I knew that in my tank that he'll find a home that he'll be comfortable in and more natural to him. So I got a good deal saying, hey, listen, he's not eating this and that, blah, blah, blah. But in, in my head, I knew more than this fish store did to get a better deal uh, to get my hands on him at a real cheap price. As you can see here, the clownfish. And I'm happy to say I know which one's going to be turning to the female. Uh, they're actually turning now. They One of them attacks me all the time. One of my hands close to that Xenia or even remotely close. And that I know it's going to be the female. The female is usually more aggressive. And you can tell they're turning now. Even though they're the same size, uh, I can tell which one's been female. It's the one right here. The one that just right here to the left side. He has a darker fin or on top. She, I would say, is going to be the female. Didn't change yet, but it's turning. And it's about that time. I had him for about eight months, nine months now. And uh, this is the uh, fish that will, maybe longer, but maybe 10 months. But um, that, that's the fish that will be turning to the female, which, you know, with this flat rock that I have that the Xena is on, it's going to be a perfect place to have babies. Uh, fortunately, once they hatch, they become fish food. So, But, then again, I love clownfish. Every fish tank should have a pair of clownfish, especially with the little guys like here. I mean, if you like the more aggressive clownfish and the bigger clownfish, you go with a maroon or a tomato. They have some nice colors, but of course, usually with fish, the prettier they are, the more aggressive they're going to be. But, uh, you know, I just like snowflake clowns. I just like the look of them. And, uh, you know, I'm not much into the platinum, even though they're more expensive, because they're, you know, less, less of a mutation. Uh, but I just like the look of them snowflake so and hopefully these guys start having babies soon but you can tell one way I would suggest is to avoid the enemies with these clownfish is to have a nice pulsing xenia rock they seem to host it very well and they love it in there you can see their day in you can just sit here and watch them just act in their little xenia little home all day day in day out and my little yellow sesser in the beginning, when I had the trigger fish, he was hiding during the day. It was at night because he was scared of him, thought he would go after him. But then he got more comfortable and then came out during the day when the trigger fish was here, realized that he's not going to bother him. So, But uh, now the trigger fish is gone. He's just all out and about. And he is just a really cool fish. Everybody thinks he's a dying fish because of the way he swims. Looks like he's uh, about to pass out. And, uh, you know, he really got the nice colors on him. All right, guys, so again, if you want to know anything, you know, tips or anything like that I've done to my tank and uh, you want to, you know, set up your tank the same way I did in the sense where if everything's running nice and smooth, give me a text message or a, uh, or a comment or anything like that, and I'll try to create a video or get back to you with a response. And just want to end here. I got this yellow sponge here. I can't focus on it, but the uh, yellow sponge growing on my my rock here and uh, to the next video hope everything is going good in your tank no Halloween hermit there and my muscle doing good hitchhiker